Hello folks and welcome back to Medieval Total War. I am Conestep and this is going to be part 13 of my early campaign where I'm playing as Aragon. And just when I, when I had had things settled down here in the Spanish Peninsula and I was building up my fleets, well, the Elma Heads came in to say hello just to remind me that they are still here. Yes, we still exist. Well, I hear you loud and clear. I'm going to have to teach you a lesson here. Again, I don't want to have to get rid of the Elm Heads. I really don't care if they just kind of exist and, you know, hang out and provide a buffer between me and the Egyptians. That would be totally cool, but I do probably have to go down here and smack some sense into them, actually kill, you know, maybe a large portion of this army so that I weaken them and then they definitely want to get another ceasefire. That would be fine with me. So with that in mind, I'm probably going to send the majority of my soldiers here in Cordoba down to Morocco to fight this army. Now this army is consisting of mostly just Saharan Cav, which is a light cav, and then peasants. And there is some camel archers and then one unit of archers as well. That's it. There still could be some teeth to this army just because, I, you know, a charge of a million light cav could still do some damage. Now I might probably just hang out here in Granada for a while. I have a couple peasants hanging out in my castle. And I think they will be fine for... Only three turns. Okay, I kind of thought it'd be more than that because a castle's, you know, big and it can definitely house two units of peasants. I guess I probably need to build my defensive structures for that to improve. Oh yeah, yeah, they interrupted that, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. I was building. So I do have my first tier of defensive structures. Yes, yeah, interesting that my peasants would only last for three turns. Oh well, that's that will be fine. If anything, what I can do is I can just go down here, you know, beat up this army, and then come up and relieve my forces in Granada. And that could be enough. I would like to know what's in Algeria, just to see if they do have a backup army hanging out there. So with that in mind, let's see, it looks like my emissaries are both a little bit landlocked at the moment. Doing a little spying on me in Central Europe, and that makes sense. I kind of wanted just to keep an eye on things here between the the French and the Germans. How about you, princess? How about you um, make your way down to Algeria? Just to kind of, you know, let me know what's going on here. And you keep really, really hard to find you. How old are you, by the way? I think I'm trying to remember what age. Princess Jimena. Jimena? And you're 25. Do the princesses become spinsters when they're 35? I can't quite remember. The good news is, my fort is almost finished here in Portugal. It's one turn away before it's complete here. And I believe that forts do confer a little bit of a population loyalty bonus in addition to the border forts as well. So I probably won't quite be ready to move this army out of Portugal, but maybe I can move a couple units. Um, I could also start training some more peasants so that as soon as, yeah, so as soon as uh, Portugal has that port ready, or fort ready, I can put those peasants into that fort, and I could probably just train a few more peasants, honestly, just to kind of hang out here and make sure the Portuguese remain happy. That's probably be a good idea. In the meantime, I am building boats here in Valencia and Aragon, and I'm going to continue working on getting that trade empire going, because yeah, I'm just three sea provinces away before I'm bordering Antioch. And how is Leon going? Yeah, so I'm three turns away before my port is finished here. So, yeah, a bit a bit of work to do. But my income's looking okay. You know, making 1500 a year is not bad at all. Now, with the French king hanging out in Aquitaine, you know, that's, that's a nobility hanging out on my border. So I think that I should probably not move these troops from Aragon. For a minute there, I was thinking that I could simply reinforce and bring some of these guys down here to Cordoba, but I probably shouldn't do that. I should probably deal with the Almohad issue with the forces that I have down here. This army should suffice when it comes to beating all of these light cav. Spearmen, archers, some feudal men at arms, urban militia, a couple units of genetes. Yeah, I, yeah, I like that. And I have a royal knight unit as well. Who is this general, by the way? For loyalty, yeah, that makes me a little bit nervous. Ooh, yeah, actually, how about I take care of that? How about... I have a different mission for you. Princess Jimena? 
What I would like is for you to raise the loyalty of one of my generals here. I believe it was him. Oh wait, I can't do that because he's already married, right? I think, wait, 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 what just, <laughs> yeah, what just, because that didn't say no. Okay, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, that's not going to work because he's already married, so she can't marry him, so she can't raise his loyalty. Okay, that's a little bit too bad. I wonder, hmm, King Fernando the First. I'm trying to think of how he raised his loyalty. I think by building a bunch of buildings, maybe? Yeah, it would be nice to raise this general's loyalty, but in any case, he's going to come down here and hopefully win this battle for me here in Morocco. Other than that, I'm just going to hang out here in Cordoba with a really, really small force just to kind of deter these Elmhead forces from, uh, you know, going further north. Other than that, though, I'm just going to drop a save and end this turn. Right, so the Elmheads did retreat from Morocco, and that was actually a little bit expected. So now I do have some of the army under a siege here in this keep, which is not completely ideal. And it looks like, yeah, so we're just continuing the siege here in Granada. And the besieger has taken some casualties, but so have I. The tavern is now completed in Valencia, so now I can train up some assassins. And the fort is finished in Portugal. Nice, merchants finished in Cordoba. And the court poet, a composer of elegant poetry for the Byzantine court, Theodore Prodromus also composes romantic verse, novels, and even, so it is rumored, satirical ditties in Greek for everyone to enjoy. That such a talented man is in the imperial, imperial court adds luster to the throne and grants plus one influence and minus 10% zeal. Good for the Byzantines. Prince Gark, I believe this is my only heir at the moment. He is often drunk, so that sucks. Negative one command and negative one acumen. And he's a believer, plus one piety, all right. And then, yeah, P Pink Fernando, Builder, plus in happiness. I feel like if I keep going down this line, I will get additional loyalty for generals. I think so, I think so. And yeah, man, that's so, I mean, Prince Gark, I guess he's still still three stars, even though, even though he's often drunk. Okay, well, small victories, I guess. So how long before, ooh, oh, oh man. If I held out here in Morocco for two turns, all of these Saharan Cav would just die, starve to death in this castle. But they do have a relieving force here, and it's not nothing. Yeah, they have two units of Gulam bodyguards, and then f three units of camel archers, three units of regular four, five units of archers, and then a bunch of peasants. So no good infantry, it's just, you know, archers, camels, and, and cav. And honestly, I feel like my army is pretty well suited to dealing with that. I have a lot of spearmen, I have five units of spearmen, a few archers, but not a ton. And I do have some genetes as well. The issue is, is that if this, you know, this army from the castle can sally out and, um, you know, attack me at the same time that this army attacks me. Yeah, that wouldn't be... I don't think... I don't know if I could win that, to be honest. But what I can do is I can come up here to Granada and try to trap these forces here. Yeah, because they brought up... Yeah, they brought up a different set of forces. Interesting. So they've taken away... Huh, that was really weird, actually, because there was a Gulam bodyguards here, but now they've moved up the Saharan Cav and some archers and some camel archers. So let's just go up here and crush this little force and clear up Granada and then we can come back down to Morocco perhaps and maybe fight there is what I'm thinking. In the meantime what can start happening as I was saying before is I can start filling Portugal up with peasants and hopefully that allows me to move away with this stack. How about this? I mean, it's in the green. Green is good. Green is good. I, did, I took this from the rebels in this campaign, right? The Elma, in the Elmaheads campaign, that's where I fought the Italians for Portugal. 
But in this one, I believe I took this from the Rebels, so I think a loyalty of 112% is fine, I think. Maybe I should leave like a couple units here. Maybe leave like the two units of archers. Loyalty up to 132%. Yeah, that, that feels a little bit better. And then I can get some more peasants in here and improve the loyalty even further. And with these units here, yeah, they can come down and assist me in these shenanigans with the Alma heads. Oh, right. Yeah, I should start moving my emissaries to a area, like a port area, region, so that I can uh, talk to the Alma head king as soon as I you know, take back Granada and basically deal a blow to his armies and try to try to teach him a lesson. But yeah, I should probably get my emissaries on the move. I probably should have did that last turn, actually, but I forgot. I did forget, but anyway, going forward, I think uh, I think everything is fine for now. Making 1600, that, that feels pretty good. So let's just drop another save and get on with it. Now the Almaheads have taken back Morocco. That was by plan. And then they, they retreated from Granada. I, I didn't think they could. How, where did, okay, I don't understand. Where did they retreat to? I thought that if my armies were coming from a province, I didn't think that they could retreat through my armies. Even though that province was taken back this turn. Well, yeah, I guess, so they just like went through me. And back to Morocco. Interesting. I, I guess I should have known that. <laughs> Alright, well, Granada's mine. And the Byzantine Empire has died from an illness. And I have a son on the way. Secret perversion. No big deal. Okie dokie. So, so, what's the dealio? I do have to find a governor for Granada. That's one thing I have to do. And... Yeah, I suppose I just go in there with my full might of all of my armies here in Cordoba and Granada and yeah, see if I can deal a blow to them that's going to make them rethink this war. So this probably should be everything like that they have, right? But they do have a few units of Gulam bodyguards. It's two, basically like two and a half units of Gulam bodyguards. And how, how is the king actually? So the king is a, yeah, four-star general, tons of acumen, and natural leader, so plus two morale. Ooh, that's gonna, that's gonna be tough. Murderous temper, yeah, great builder, plus one loyalty for all his generals. Yeah, that's the one that I'm trying to get for myself. And then, yeah, affable as well. Yeah, damn, he's, this is, uh, this is gonna be kind of a tough one. I do have a three-star general myself, but, um... Actually, yeah, he's- yeah, plus three morale. Okay, okay, that does- right, right, right. I'm remember- I'm remembering now. So I think, as long as I find a governor, let me find... Who has four acumen? You have four, four acumen. What is your trait? Hard sums. Okay. Extra acumen. And... So let's give this to you. Granada's happy. Let's give you some high taxes. And let's go down here and see if we can beat this army. And let's bring down all of these guys. Let's bring down some more feudal men-at-arms. Just bring everything that I have. And then they're still happy and they're still happy. Yeah, that works out. Okay, actually, no, I can actually leave my two peasants in the castle. I was able to get a couple more boats in the water, and with that, I'm getting oh, so close. So close. I'm just two more provinces away from Antioch. But I still, of course, need to build that church and that chapter house. And I'm going to see if I can get that done here in Lyon. One more turn before that port is finished. And then after that, let's see. Ooh, damn, damn, damn. So I need to build a keep first. Oh, okay, keep's gonna be eight years. 
Um, yeah, I don't know if I can get this done here. So eight years plus what, four for the church and then how many for the chapter house? Like two or three or four? That's gonna cut it very, very close. Yeah, that's gonna cut it very, very close. But what I can do in the meantime is to simply just keep, you know, building up things such as, you know, my boats and everything. Boats and armies. That way, by the time I do have a chapter house ready, I will just have armies ready to go and take Antioch immediately. See, now that I do have a tavern in Valencia, I would love nothing more than to train up a few assassins just to kind of get rid of all of these emissaries hanging out in my provinces from the Almaheads and from the French because that means they are no doubt just spying on me. And that does make me a little bit nervous. I would like to clear out my territories of these agents. But because I'm kind of, kind of limited from, you know, with what I can actually build boats from, and Valencia being one of my provinces where I can build boats, I can't stop doing that right now until I, you know, get another province that allows me to build boats because right now I just have Aragon and Valencia. So that's something I'm going to need to be working on pretty soon. Obviously I'm going to be working on that here in Portugal, but maybe Cordoba as well. Let's see, a shipwright. Yeah, it's pretty, um... Wait, no, I can't, I can't build boats in Cor No, I can't build boats in Cordoba. Right. Okay, let's get a shipwright. It's pretty... It's pretty cheap. Yeah. Let's do that there. I probably should have done that already, but... Ah, uh, well. Alright, let's end this turn and see if I can win this battle here in Morocco. Oh yeah, before I forget, let's get my emissary from province over here. And my princess, you can just hang out in Tunisia and, you know, see if there's anything over there. But yeah, once I win this battle here in Morocco, hopefully if I win this battle here in Morocco, I can try to sue for peace with the Almaheads. So, nothing else for it. Let's end a turn and, uh, or drop a save and end a turn. Damn, so the, they did retreat again. Man, okay. Well, I did pillage some money and, uh, destroyed some buildings. So, yeah, so the port is complete in Lyon. That's awesome. The, sorry English, I can't be your friends. I need to be friends with the, the French instead. I know, it's like choosing sides with the Emperor. Um, okay, so secret pride, negative one command, plus three valor for Don Bermudo de Agre Agreta. Not too concerned about that. All right, so Morocco is now mine again. I don't, I don't want Morocco. I don't want it, but what I can do is simply destroy all of your buildings. Now, this is a really weird one. This is such a weird thing. When you destroy a castle upgrade, or in this case, you know, the keep upgrade, which is the curtain wall, it destroys the entire castle itself, but you don't get the money for it. See, this is the construction cost for the curtain wall, right? 200 florins. Destroy, I can get 100 back, but that's just the defensive upgrade. That's not all of the money that went into building the castle itself. But then I get rid of it and boom, the whole thing's gone. So, yeah, I'm getting rid of it for the Elma heads, but it's just it's just really really strange that uh yeah, that that's a that's a mistake. That shouldn't be the case. Getting rid of a defensive upgrade just gets rid of the entire castle. That's pretty dumb. But let's just get rid of everything else while we're here. Destroy all your shit and take all your money because and then trying to teach you a lesson. I mean, they won't just let me kill them, so I have to teach them a lesson somehow. And I, I believe that it's the opposite for the improved farmland. I believe that the, I do destroy this one at a time, right? So improved farmland. Oh, no, no, that just destroyed everything. Okay, so I'm, I must be thinking of something else. So yeah, let's get rid of the border fort, get rid of the gold mine complex. So I made a bit of money there. And is it even worth giving someone the governorship of Morocco. I mean, maybe I'll make money off of it for one turn, you know? So let's just kind of, who has four acumen? Ah, you have four acumen. All right, perfect. Let's give you Morocco, just to make some money off of it for one turn. And that's, uh, that's all I need from you. So well done. All right, so let's just go back to our home then. And let's hope that we can end this war, honestly. Like, where's my emissary? Where'd you, where'd you go, bud? Yeah, it can be a little bit hard to find your emissary sometimes. 
Let's uh, get a ceasefire. Let's see if they take it. I mean, let's see. I can lower the taxes. So, because I'm not trying to give them more soldiers. That would suck for me, but... Yeah, in any case, yeah, I'm not trying to, you know, ruin your lives, guys. Just stop trying to ruin mine, and uh, we can we can be friends again. Let's try to get this cat castle, ring, wall, and catapult towers here in Granada. Just that extra upgrades. And, yeah, I got a bit of money now, so I'm making 2500 a turn. That feels pretty good. I am going to start building a keep here in Lyon just because I do want to see if I can get that chapter house in Lyon so I can get those plus one Valor uh, Knights of Santiago here in my crusades but just in case I don't have enough time to get this done I'm gonna start building a church here in Castile just so if you know if worse comes to worse I can at least train up a or I can build a crusade marker in Castile and send that to Antioch and that should be fine oh go on Navarre you can start building your keep as well it is past time for that because yeah I start I need I need more provinces that can get me the things that I need I'm running out of room here, so... Yep, let's try to get... Because I, that's the thing, I need agents, I need boats, I need soldiers. I would like to build my professional soldiers to replace my mercenaries that are guarding my borders right now. That would feel pretty good, so I'm going to replenish some of my units that I can replenish. Obviously, I can't replenish my mercenaries. So they're going to have to keep on getting paid until I can, uh, yeah, replace them. Because right now, I do need numbers on the borders, just in case France tries anything funny. I know they are still at war with, yeah, the English and the Germans. So you would think, like, they wouldn't, but, yeah, they, they, they might. They could. That's what they do. So let's keep a vigilant eye on them. And, yeah, let's hope we can get a ceasefire with the Almaheads, because I don't really, this is not, I don't like this. You can just, you, just chill out, guys. That'd be totally fine with me. The Yalmaheads have come back to Morocco, that is to be expected, and let's see, I have another son on the way, awesome. Let's see, you are charitable, and then secret pride, secret avarice, plus two acumen, negative ten happiness, okay, not, not a big deal. Yeah, it would be nice to get that peace treaty, I have my, I have my emissary on the way, he hasn't been able to talk to the king quite yet. And ooh, you only have three loyalty, oh. He just became of age, and he only has three loyalty. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I would... Uh, man, I wish I had more... You know, more means available to try to lower... Lower the loyalty of this guy. If I had maybe a spy, I could do that. Because spies have an ability to lower the loyalty of generals, which is pretty, not, pretty cool. But it's gonna be a while until I can get to spies. Yeah, so now they have all of their armies just kind of hanging out here in Morocco, which looks pretty freaking intimidating, I'll tell you, tell you what. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't over yet. That's a decent, you know, decent little force that they have. A lot of cav, a lot of archers, and I still would like to kind of, you know, face them on the battlefield and fight them. But for the time being, I suppose... Let's see, who's this guy? He's the one with the plus three morale, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna hang tight with a stack in each of Cordoba and Granada for now. And I'm gonna keep reinforcing with my soldiers, and of course keep training up soldiers. Here in Cordoba, I can keep going with some more feudal sergeants. May as well. Granada, I don't think I can train anything but urban militia there, so I'm not gonna really bother with that. Let's see, Valencia, can I... Get anything going here. Not really anything too important. Aragon working on boats. Oh yeah, I do have an extra boat here. So what I can do is spread this out a little bit more. And just keep moving you down the line. And I believe that gets me to Antioch. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I technically I technically could invade Antioch if I wanted to, but I do of course want to get that crusade going. So let's move some genetes down to Cordoba. Yeah, whatever extra troops I have. Let's just go to Cordoba to try to dissuade them from attacking me here. Oh yeah, I did forget that... So I have a new son, and... Well, I mean, new. He's 23 now. So he's uh, actually pretty old for a son. So let's get you married. Yeah. Let's find a wife. Here's a bunch of Danish... Danish princesses. Let's see if we can marry one of them. Am I already... 
allied with the Danes. I am not. Yeah, hey, you know what? Let's let's get a Danish princess for you. How about it? Why not? Actually, you looked pretty good as well. I mean, yeah, often drunk. Four piety, two dread, three command, zero acumen. But like, honestly, yeah, that's not bad for often drunk. That's that's okay. I'll take it. So let's drop a save and let's end this turn. And I wonder, yeah, I wonder if the Elmheads are gonna attack me. I don't. They they have a lot. They can three v one me in either of my two provinces of Granada or Cordoba. So that's a little bit nerve wracking. Let's see how they act. Ah, yes, they went straight for Cordoba. You know, I actually have... Yeah, I actually outnumbered them in this one. I was, I was thinking I did, yeah. So I, I outnumber them, and yeah, they're bringing in their first wave... They're bringing one, two, three, four, five, six units of light calf, plus their heavy calf, and then one, two, three, four units of ca camel archers. They are bringing some grenade dudes, some naphtha throwers. So that's a little bit nerve-wracking, but then one unit of archers, three peasants. And then, yeah, there is, you know, there's going to be some reinforcements for sure. But the reinforcements I'm not too worried about because they typically are going to trickle in. So as long as I build an army that can defeat, you know, all of this cav, basically, I should be fine dealing with the reinforcements. You know what? I actually like this. This is looking pretty decent, I think. Unfortunately, they did bypass my decent general in Granada, the one that gives the plus three morale, so he's going to be hanging out there. I only have a one-star general in this, so that's not ideal. It's going to be one of my genetes. So, yeah, that's a little nerve-wracking. They are bringing their three-star general. This is going to be one of their heirs. And I can't see... Yeah, I can't see what his, what his traits are. Prince Ibrahim. But, yeah, he's a, he's a three-star general, so... Hopefully he's not conveying or conferring any um any additional morale bonuses. That would be really unfortunate. But you know what? Let's get in here. I am going to be bringing in my Mangonel. It's not usually ideal to bring in artillery pieces like this to go up against armies, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I can get anything done with it. It might get some good shots in and pick off some units. In fact, if it can pick off some of the Gulam bodyguards, that'd be pretty cool. This is not going to be completely ideal, although I do have a hill, which is pretty nice. There's this little lip here, which I'm not too keen on. There's this little lip here of this forest that can cover the enemy as they approach me. But look at how big this mango now is. This is just absurd. I know we've already seen it before, but like that's just... It's so big. It's like its own like structure, you know? It's like its own building. But in any case, let's get formed up and ready to go here. I hate that I can't use my unit formations to get formed up uh, prior to the battle starting like I can in Shogun. It's just so, so awkward feeling. But, you know, whatever. As long as I have time to get formed up, everything should be fine. So, let's form a nice little defensive structure here. And let's go in front of the javelins like this. And let's bring down my feudal men at arms on either side you come down here you come down here and you come down here and then I also have three units of genetes as well you you and you all right yeah wish me luck let's see how this goes the Elm heads are coming in pretty fast because of course they are like all cav so this is gonna kick off pretty soon here looks like my army is facing the wrong way so <laughs> that's always that's always fun. Let's try to get reformed as fast as freaking possible. Probably should have checked that before I started forming up, but uh, you know what? Here we are, so let's, let's see if I can fix this in time. Can I start firing my mango now? Looks like everything... How is everything out of range? So these are too far, I think, and then it can't turn far enough. Yeah, that's right, so it can't, it can't turn. So it can't even shoot at anything coming at me this way. <laughs> oh, that feels so dumb. Oh, jeez. I should probably just retreat it right now, honestly, and get an actual unit that's going to contribute to this battle. I think... I think so. I mean, I can start shooting at these Saharan Cav. So they're in range now, so maybe I can get some shots on, on them. Let's see, that's a that's a high boulder. That's a high bow 
That's a high bounce. Now the bounces actually do also kill, so it's not just where it lands, it's also where it bounces, which is which is pretty cool, but yeah, I, I do, I don't know, maybe I should get rid of this. Having this here, like I literally can only aim at these units down here in the forest. And its rate of fire is not high at all. Like, here's another boulder coming in. Let's see, yep, yeah, that missed as well. Yeah, I'm gonna retreat these guys and see if I can get another unit in. So I'm gonna set my assembly points like right here so I can, my reinforcements are gonna come in from the back and come right here. And I think my first unit of reinforcements is gonna be a unit of spearmen, which, you know what? I can definitely use more spearmen. Please look at all of this cav. Now, where do you guys think you're gonna go? You, you wanna charge right into my feudal sergeants? All right, that's fine with me. Spears versus light cav, that feels pretty good. And I can bring in my swordsmen to help cut down these light cav because, yeah, swordsmen are good against lightly armored foes. And they're also good when they're not being charged by a cav, which is exactly this circumstance. So this is kind of perfect. I have some javelin men here, which are a little bit exposed, if I'm being honest. Let's bring these swordsmen over here. And let's see, camels versus, let's see, how is this gonna go? Let's bring in, let's see, how are we doing? It says they're winning easily. Why would that be true? <laughs> okay, let's see, you guys come over here and then we need, yeah, Gulam bodyguards are right here. We need javelins to throw and yeah, this is where things get a little bit dicey. So my javelins are throwing at the Gulam bodyguards. My genitates are also throwing in at the Gulam bodyguards. Let's have my archers back up a little bit. And let's keep my field sergeants right there. Yeah, that's going to get a little bit tricky. Let's get these genitates down here as well. So that they can also throw their, their javelins at these Gulam bodyguards. There's 14 Gulam bodyguards left. But they're taking a lot of casualties from my javelins. Let's see, these javelin men... Yeah, let's see, my feudal sergeants are running away. That's not a good feeling. That's not a good feeling at all. I could definitely use another unit of spearmen. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, so these Gulen bodyguards are not dying fast enough. Let's send in my genitase to try to fight this. And let's try to wrap them up. Wait, why are my... Why is 81 spearmen running away? That's just insane. <laughs> oh, dear. What a mess. Let's see, so we are driving away the light cab on this side, so let's try to, yeah, my general's now running away, that's not good. And let's see if we can turn around and face these light cab. My archers are still shooting, it looks like, so I, my flank on this side is like kind of holding in. And let's see if I can chase off these Saharan cab, cab with my genitase. I don't even know if my genitase win that battle, but I can use my swordsman to try to clean that up. And let's try to kill these Berber camels here on this side. My archers are still firing here, of course. And you know what? It's not over till it's over because I do have reinforcements coming in. But yeah, this is uh, this is not a good beginning. That's for goddamn sure. Let's have these archers back up as well. And yeah, Saharan Cav are beating my genitase and my swordsman, which is just a weird, weird feeling. I'm really surprised that that's the case. And yeah, just a ton of peasants. Ton, a ton of peasants. Man, oh man. Yeah, it would be nice if I could get my swordsmen fighting these peasants. I do have some swordsmen still fighting, which is surprising. If we can kill these camels, like, why are these camels still fighting? That's crazy. Let's see. Archers, fire at the... Ooh, archers. You're out of ammunition. Okay, so you run down here and start fighting against peasants, I think. Can we break these peasants? Can we make them run away? And how is this camel still fighting? Come on! Oh man, so yeah, looks like these Saharan Cav are beating my two units, my swordsman and my genitase. So we killed the enemy general, okay. Well, that is great. How, how did that happen? So let's get these javelin men back down here because they did rally. All right, let's see. Yeah, how, how did we kill the enemy general? Was, was he not the unit of Gulen bodyguards? Interesting. All right, let's see. Let's see. Feudal men of arms, get back up here. Ooh, ooh naphtha throwers, naphtha throwers. All right, try to get the naphtha throwers. These are the grenade guys. So if I can try to get them with my feudal men of arms, that would be good. And yeah, now this is going to get a little bit scary right now because now they have camel archers that are shooting unhindered. And let's see, archers, you still have ammunition? Yes, you do. So you need to come down here as well. 
Let's see if I can bring on some more units. Ooh, I hear bombs going off. I hear bombs going off. That's not what I like to see. Uh, am I catching them, though? Yeah, the naphtha throwers, yeah, there's still 12 of them, so that looks like... Come on, guys. You, you gotta get the naphtha throwers. Like, yeah, I, I know it's a it's a tough job, but I need I need you to get, to get rid of these naphtha throwers. I actually have some more soldiers coming in now, and if I can get these guys and have them rally around this hill... Remember, I'm the attacker here. Ooh, they did charge my swordsman down here. Yeah, now my swordsman are running away. Yeah, I, I knew that was gonna happen. I just couldn't... I couldn't really... I don't. I didn't have any cavalry to, to commit to chasing down those naphtha throwers. Actually, I did. Damn, I could have used these guys. Oh, well. But if I simply just hang on for dear life until the battle timer runs out, I still win this battle. And I am inflicting casualties on this army. So, I just need to hold out until I have more reinforcements come on. See, this is what's terrifying. Naphtha throwers standing in what probably should be bomb throwing range. Oh no. Oh no, no. No, 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 no. Genetes, you need to run these guys down. I'm sorry, but even if I lose these nine Spanish genetes to, say, like, these camels coming down, I need to get rid of these guys. In fact, okay, good. Now they're running away. Perfect. So we're cutting down these naphtha throwers, and I might possibly be able to retreat my genetes before these, you know, camels react. So yeah, if we can kill the remaining four, four naphtha throwers, that would be good. Ooh, we just got another charge in from the Saharan Cav on a flank that I was not quite watching. That is very unfortunate. So let's shoot in here. So we did drive away the Saharan Cav. Luck lucky for me. Yeah, these archers are out of ammuni ammunition, so they're simply just going to hold the line here. Which is never a good feeling, holding the line with archers. But at this point, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, most of the pressure is coming in from this side. Peasants are running away. Luckily, yeah, because I did kill their general, the morale of these units is going to be very, very low. Unfortunately, I don't really have the Cav power to to uh, run out at them and, you know, drive them back. Because if I overextend myself, I possibly could get overrun. Let's see, we do have archers in the back. Hmm. On the other hand, though, right now I'm just kind of sitting here taking shots. And it would, it would feel a lot better to be able to put some pressure on them. That is for sure. We got another fight going on here. My, there, well, there's Sir Heron Cav are fighting my archers and my feudal sergeants. Again, it's, I feel like I should be winning this, but... Yeah, it says these hit here in camp are winning. So let's get some shots in here. Let's bring in some more archers to fight. Because that's really all I have right now. Bring in my swordsmen as well. Ooh, so swordsmen versus peasants. Even though I only have 31 swordsmen, they should do a good job here. Let's bring in archers on this side. Let's bring in some more archers here. Looks like my feudal sergeants are running away from their Saharan Cav, which is a really bad feeling. Oh no. Okay, spearmen versus their Saharan Cav. And let's get feudal sergeants versus their peasants there. Let's see, I have more spearmen over here just defending against nothing. So it looks like they are going to be committing to an attack on this side. So let's commit the rest of my army over here. We were able to drive them back again. Luckily, yeah, it looks like we were able to push them off. And I think, ooh, another, oh, that's the other unit of Gulen bodyguards. Oh, yikes, 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 yikes. I need to get back because that's, that's, that's 15 Gulen bodyguards. And this is the late game right here. 15 Gulen bodyguards is like a boss battle. So I need to make sure, I absolutely need, need to make sure that I can kill these Gulen bodyguards. So fire, 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 loose, loose, loose. Send all of my spears and all of my arrows towards this unit of Gulen bodyguards. I need to be able to bring them down. Let's see, javelin men. You need to be able to shoot or throw your javelins at them. Feudal sergeants come in, kill them. Archers go in here and fight. I feel like I have to have some genetes somewhere as well. Where's my genetes? Yeah, genetes, you come in here, throw your javelins as well. Yeah, they did break my feudal men at arms. And yeah, Gulen bodyguards are still fighting, but the Saharan calf did run away. And looks like, okay, now the Gulen bodyguards are running away as well. They're taking a lot of casualties. And I know one of their princes is in one of these units. So yeah, they're down to four men. I wonder if I did, was able to kill the prince. And now at this point, yeah, let's just chase them off. Let's just chase them off and see if we can get rid of... Yeah, kill as many units as possible here. And that's going to do it. The Almaheads are fleeing the field. I was able to win a come-from-behind come victory here in Cordoba. 
And I think what I would like to do is kill these 86 men that I have captured. In fact, there's going to be more coming up here. Yeah, I have some horse archers stationed down there, archers as well. So yeah, that's going to be pretty nice. In fact, it's tempting to... It is actually is tempting to try to ransom back some of these guys because I feel like that would make the Alma Heads broke. Because with all these men that I'm killing, they're not going to have to pay upkeep on these guys. And that could give them some financial freedom to train up more soldiers. And that's not what I want. So maybe from here on out, I just continue to... Yeah, how about I just keep these guys and see if I can get the Alma Heads to buy them back. And that's gonna do. So I did kill 736. I lost. I lost. I lost 702 men. Oh my god! Wow. And I did capture 67. And those are the 67 that I, you know, kept towards the end there. So let's see. So they did uh, actually ransom. It was only 82 cash. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have killed those other guys. Looks like there's a rebellion here in Byzantine territory here in Rhodes. Okay. The French have a great army. Okay. Holy Roman Emperor has been killed in battle. A new emperor has been elected to lead the Germans. And let's see. So yeah, the general that won that battle is now a second rank general, Don Bermudo, Bermudo Mendoza. All right, good job, man. Port is finished here in Portugal. And the, a, the compass rose, a reliable guide that can point the way to the north in all weathers and at night is a blessing to sailors. They need not hug the coast, praying that the weather will be kind to them. Now, in larger ships, they can sail with confidence across the ocean. Awesome. So that means that I can now start building my deep water boats. See, the Muslims don't have to wait for that. They don't have to wait for the compass to be invented. They can just start building bagalas pretty early on in the campaign, whereas the Catholic factions, well, all the other factions, do have to wait till the compass is invented before they can... I, I believe you can already build a boatyard and have it ready right away. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I could have already had a boatyard built, but now I can build a boatyard and actually, you know, build, build uh, boats from the boatyard. So it looks like the Alma Heads have rejected my proposal of a ceasefire. God damn. Okay. But the Danes have graciously accepted my proposal of a marriage. That feels pretty good. And yeah, so this two-star general of mine, doubtful courage, so... <laughs> there are serious doubts about his courage in the face of the enemy. Reports of him screaming like a girl as he departed the field are not too exaggerated. His men are not inspired. Not negative six morale. Oh my god. Wow. Good runner. Another negative three morale. Is that, like, is that uh, um, cumulative? Is that counted negative nine morale? And then scant mercy. So... <laughs> Plus one dread. Oh, man. Oh, dear. So I probably don't want to be using him as a general in any battles coming up. And yeah, yeah, I guess, I mean, let's try to get another ceasefire with these guys. Maybe, maybe he wasn't considering the men that I just killed. And now that I've killed 700 of his men, now maybe he will reconsider this war with me. Dockyard, not a boatyard. Okay, well, without further ado, let's just start going with it. I have the money for it. It's going to take six years. It's going to cost 600 florins, but you know what? It is going to be worth it because with this, it doesn't tell me... Huh, that's interesting. Why isn't it telling me what boats I can build? I'm pretty sure I can start building my second tier boat right away. I thought I could. Is it... Wait, am I wrong about that? Huh. Okay, well let's just get, let's just start building it in Valencia and in Aragon, and yeah, hopefully I can start building. I believe Caravels is my deep water boat for the Catholic factions, so that should be pretty good. I'm pretty sure Caravels are like a really, really good boat, so that's going to be pretty nice. That's going to help me really secure the seas as well because that's going to give me options for the three deep sea regions like the Atlantic Ocean and the Western Mediterranean, and then the. I want to say the Central Mediterranean is the other one. Yeah, the Central Mediterranean is the other deep water, deep water sea region. Okay, that looks good. So I will be getting a boat on the, on the Nile coast, and that's going to be very nice as well because I can make that income from Egypt, Palestine, and Tripoli as well. And that's going to feel really, really good because my income's already looking pretty good. Making 3300 not bad, not bad indeed. But 
Yeah, this war with the Elmheads is a little bit annoying. Now, I don't have any boats that are bordering any of their ports, so... It's not like I was making any trade income off of them anyway. But still, I would like to have things pretty, you know, peaceful between us if I could get that going. So, I'm going to keep trying to get an alliance with the Elmheads. And I am also going to keep, yeah, training up soldiers and working on getting this chapter house going in Lyon. So, I can eventually build that crusade marker and then go and take Antioch. And, oh, speaking of which, I actually can spy on Antioch now. Here it is. Trade resources, silk, spices, and gems. These two are pretty freaking rare, and that's going to be really, really nice. I mean, look at this. Antioch is making 814 florins a year, and they haven't even built a port yet. That's 814 florins off of just their farm income. So Antioch is rich. Very, very rich. So this is going to be very nice to take. And if we have a look at what's defending Antioch, well, a tier one castle, just a fort. That's it. No, no, no Mount, no Bailey. What's it called? What, is it a... I forgot. Is it a Mount? What? Mount? I, I'm, I'm forgetting what that... What is that? Mott. Mott. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. No Mott, no Bailey. And if we have a look at the forces that are defending it, they have a six-star general, honestly. Nor Aldine. I wonder if he's an historical general. He must be. He has to be an historical general. But if he's an historical general, he comes with only two loyalty. My goodness. That is awful. But five dread, and then, what is that? Six, six command, four acumen, four piety, and then expert attacker, so plus two command while attacking. So he has eight command when attacking, man of honor, plus 100% cost of bribe, and blackmailer, <laughs> minus three loyalty. Man, he is, he is really good. Unfortunately, his army's not really good. Some camel warriors. These are spear-armored camel warriors, not archer camel warriors. And then some Saharan cav peasants. Some Nubian spearmen, which is just some basic... Um, I mean, they're, they're decent, decent spearmen, but like, you know, nothing, nothing that we can't handle. And then some basic archers as well. Not even a half stack. Yeah, there's not much there in Antioch. I'm pretty sure if I bring a crusade and maybe an army or two to accompany it, I mean, accompany, accompany it, then I can come in here, secure Antioch. And Egypt is busy with the Byzantines. Yeah, they are fighting the Byzantines. And it looks like the war is going okay for them at the moment. But they probably will be too busy to really focus on defending Antioch. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that happening. But... You know, for the time being, I do have to focus on what's in front of me. And what's in front of me is just a big old pile of Alma heads. So that's going to be coming up, you know, in the next episode. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this one. And thank you very much for watching. I, I've been Connor Step, and this has been Medieval Total War. Thank you very much. And goodbye.